So I would like to invite Ms. Martha Weiss, a resident of Jerusalem and a survivor of Auschwitz-Birkenau, to address you today. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the State of Israel and in the name of the Jewish people, Ms. Martha Weiss. His Excellencies, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for having given me this opportunity to address such an important uh, audience. Uh, I'd just like to say that I'm speaking uh, uh, in the name of those that were the six million who were perished and have no uh, voice. My name is Marta Weiss, as you just heard. I was born in Czechoslovakia in nine, October the 8th, 1934. Um, I'm a survivor of Auschwitz-Birkenau and the diabolical experiments of uh, Mengele, Joseph Mengele. In, in 1944, after 180 members of my father's family who had already been deported to Treblinka and Auschwitz and murdered there, my parents decided to try at least save the remnants of their children. And my sister, older sister Eva and I were sent to a place called um, Nitra in Czechoslovakia where we lived as evacuated Aryan children uh, to, to try and save us. On the, 8th of December, of the 8th of October, 1944, on my 10th birthday, our neighbors decided, who suspected that we are Jewish, decided to denounce us, and we were arrested, uh, interrogated and beaten for s several days till we, we held out that we are not Jewish, and finally sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau to Mengele's experimental barracks, as I said. When we arrived in Auschwitz, the sight that met our eyes is indescribable. There were Nazi troops, SS people, with, uh, with the German shepherd, the dog, the Alsatian dogs, killer dogs, uh, waiting for us on the platform. We were thrown out, pushed out of the wagons. Some people who were killed as they were pushed out, others managed to get up and uh, uh, stood upright. A detachment of, of um, inmates, ma ma uh, people in skeletons, literally skeletons in, in uh, striped clothing, of course we didn't know at the time that they were Jewish inmates, were supposed to be porters and we were told that they are porters and leave your luggage on the train because the porters will take your luggage off. That was, of course, a lot of nonsense. But then we just came to an understanding that everything in Auschwitz is a euphemism and everything is a lie. We finished up, we were told to get out of line up in fives, men and women and children on one side, men on the other side, and the porters in the, the, will take your, uh, your luggage off these porters, at the pain of death, were not allowed to speak to the newcomers, that they, they were Jewish inmates. They tried to save some of us by f speaking to us. And they used to whisper to women with small children, give your small, young women with small children, give your small children to the uh, older lady, anybody but 50, 40, 45, because they knew that if a young woman turns up in front of Mengele, she will be immediately sent to the guest chamber with her little children, but if she was young and looked as though she can work, she would have a chance of survival. One of, to young men, they would say, how old are you? You are 16? No, you are 19, you are 20, because the older they were, the better the chances of survival. One of them asked my sister, how old are you? She said 13. He said, no, you're not, you're 16. 
We were then marched in front of the gentleman at the end, which, whom we found out to be Ma uh, Joseph Mengele, the monster. And he just took one look at us. He sent me to one side, and he asked my sister in German, what, how old are you? She said 16. He sent her to the other side. We, we went through a lot of uh, uh, trauma and, and, uh, and, and pain and uh, starvation, and, but I can't go through it all in this uh, short time. Finally, we, were finish we finished up in Mengele's experimental barracks with four twins. We never, we never pretended that we are twins. We didn't look like twins. My only guess is that he was short of guinea pigs, so he took us into the twins' barracks. Uh, we, was, we never found out exactly what he, the treatment was. We were bled every day. You see, Jewish blood was good enough for the na German army, but it wasn't good enough to live. We were bled every day. I don't have a clue how they found any blood in our, in our veins because we were so de uh, emaciated. Um, and we, we finished up, in, as I said, in, in this uh, barracks with the twins. He did experiments on us. And uh, how he did it, I don't know. I don't know. To this day, I cannot imagine how we survived. In November, December, January 1944-45, we were in rags, in, in, in deep snow, and without food, without uh, clo proper clothing, and we survived. To describe Auschwitz, there's only one word, evil incarnate. Everything was evil there. And, sorry. <laughs> And it was, it, it, I can't describe it at all to you. Um, Auschwitz wasn't a camp which was built by, by the, ele the criminal element of society, you would think. It was organized it by, uh, by uh, uh, with the knowledge of, ev of, of uh, psychology and, and uh, technology. The people who designed it was, were not, desi uh, were, desi uh, were um, uh, learned engineers, architects, and they use their knowledge to build this camp deliberately as an extermination camp for Jews for no reason except that we were born as Jews. Today I want to focus a little bit on the rising anti-Semitism that has again reared its ugly head in, the, in the war, Europe and which is on par with the, the anti-Semitism of the 1930s before, which led to the Holocaust. Today, the whole world is aflame, and another Holocaust can happen, again, God forbid, if the free world does not listen to take, and take seriously the threats against it from racist and anti-Semitic Jew haters. Not a day goes by without hearing reports of anti-Semitic acts, the desecration of the synagogues in the world, graves, and hooligans assaulting innocent people for no other reason than they are different from them. The passive, I could not care less attitude of the European community towards anti-Semitism in, uh, in the 1930s is precisely the same as it is now post-Holocaust. Today we see the emergence of right-wing anti-Semitic parties in Hungary, France, and other countries. We saw what happened in France recently. We see biased reporting in the media. We hear reports of harassment, verbal abuse, and acts of violence. World anti-Semitism is even more evident today with the threats of economic boycotts on Israel and uh, academic boycotts on Israel. A reminder of the steps taken by Nazi Germany with the rise of Hitler then as now, the world is standing by silently. People often ask, where was God during the Holocaust? My question is, where was man? Today, 71 years ago, I was liberated by the Russian army. As a 10-year-old in Auschwitz, I never dreamt I would survive, let alone have the privilege and joy of living in our ancient land, in our country, in the state of Israel, with our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren.
Israel is a country which in its very short existence of 67 years has contributed to the world through its 12 Nobel Prizes, extensive research and achievements in the fields of medicine, agriculture, high tech and more. We are a country that is a melting pot of various peoples and cultures from all over the world. Our capital city, Jerusalem, is the home of four religions living in cooperation and coexistence. 71 years ago, there was no United Nations. Today, I ask you, the United Nations, to put an end to anti-Semitism and baseless hatred and the persecution of innocent people around, all around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Wise, for your uh, very moving uh, statement. And thank you to the Ambassador of Israel for his uh, previous words.